Yeah, I, I mean, it goes way back to when I was living in New York City, and I just, something about living in New York and people having their guard up a lot and it, it being a very, even though, even though you're surrounded by millions of people, it can be very lonely. And, um, but sometimes you make these like random connections with people just by sight. And I, I thought, what if two people made this random connection, but then they lost each other? And what would the story be if he, if this guy was trying to find this girl again that was perfect for him? I think for an animator, you're always, you have to focus on this one small thing, this one component of the, of the film. And it's okay to just be to your, be, keep to yourself. And f to be a director, you really have to be there for people. And you have to, you have to give back, you have to be available, and um, you have to explain yourself a lot to a lot of different people. And just once they get going, though, I think people just will always surprise you with how great they can, they'll just run with, this, with the ideas that you're telling them, so. The process is a, is a hybrid, I mean a true hybrid of, the, of both of the mediums, and I think it really has the best of both worlds. Like, it has the stability and the dimensionality of CG, and it has that beautiful line and, and expressiveness that, that hand-drawn can have. Um, and I, I, I thought there must be a way to bring these two together because I didn't want to leave the drawings behind anymore because there's so much drawing in the production, in the pre-production, you know. And I had some very silly ideas about how that would work technically, and ultimately it was solved in a very interesting and unusual way, I think, where it, it drags the drawings along perfectly, but in a very flat way. So it keeps the flatness of the drawing, which is what you want. You don't want it to be like a texture map that's like rolling around the, the back of the character. Part of the technique is the technology, but another part of the technique is just visual decision making. Like if, you, if you're gonna put line work on top of CG, the CG can't look like regular CG. It has to speak to the line work. It has to feel natural with it. And it can't be all dimensional and round and perfectly lit. So a lot of the CG lighting that we were doing was very flat and very flat toned. And, and that was something that the lighters had to get used to. It was like a new thing for them. The, the blown out lighting for me is, I love to shoot into the light. I'm a photographer myself and I, I love what happens when like hair, the, the halo effect around hair and, and letting things be blown out and overexposed like Ridley Scott or, or the, the amazing effects you can get in cinema. But I don't feel like I've seen very much of that in CG. And I, I, I really wanted to see how far we could push that. And when John Lasseter saw the test shot that was totally blown out behind it, he was like, are you gonna, are you gonna overexpose all that like that? And I'm like, uh, we were thinking, yeah, and he's like, good, do it. And I'm like, yes! <laughs> so that was really good, that was really exciting for me because I, it, I knew that he, he understood what we were doing and he wanted us to just run with that idea. So that made us really happy. If, if you're asking, just do the, you have CG animators and hand-drawn animators, is there a conflict between them? And, um, I think we pushed for the acting to be as complete as we could make it when it was in the CG form. And I think the, the drawing that went over top of it, unfortunately, wasn't as much about the acting for the 2D animators because they're, they're great actors too. But what I was pushing for from the 2D animators was their line and that expressive form and their design work and those little decisions that they make about eyes and eyelids and the shape of everything and their appeal. I mean. What they brought to the project was so new and fresh. I mean, Rango is a good example of a film that's very blown out at times, and they did a beautiful job with that. And um, that whole thing is just very interesting. And I, I think if I was to make, if I did make Paper Man in straight CG, I still would have pushed for that overexposure. And, and there's a lot of great tools um, that allow you to do that nowadays, you know.